we're going to go over a series of new features which are intended for um, helping you design with the MotorSolve product. So initially what we're going to uh, look at is the fact that uh, a new feature uh, called uh, Undo and Redo has been added to the product, you can see here. And while you're in a particular context, uh, you can do undo or redo uh, to change or modify uh, the structures that you've made changes to if you need to go back. And while you're in a particular construct or context area, uh, you have unlimited abilities to do that. And as you can see here, uh, it allows me to go back and forth from the different activity changes I've made. And one of the other interesting aspects of things is we've actually added an expression evaluator. So you can do things, for instance, and put equations into various entry areas. And that allows for much more versatility as you're entering the geometries and such. Those are kind of interface areas. Now we're going to look at uh, some of the design constructs and things that we've added. So I've brought up here uh, the 2010 Prius. And we're going to step through and look at a series of tests and see some of the uh, new improvements and additions that have been created. Uh, the first one that we're going to look at is actually uh, the cogging torque. You can see here that we have a graph of the cogging torque, which allows you to review and see uh, the cogging torque as a function of um, the position. And one of the new additional uh, features that you have is that you can actually go in and modify the graphs that, as you desire to set up applicable scaling and repeatability of scaling as it pertains to the data as you change the signs. Um, one of the other, the other nice uh, addition to this kind of graph is you see here that the, the labeling uh, is actually persistent, meaning that once you move your mouse and let go, um, the labeling that is shown on the screen just stays there which allows you to document it through the report and other such things. Uh, additional tests that we're going to run here. Uh, let's see back EMF. And you can see it for various speed that the back EMF is going to be as either a phase or line to line plot, depending on your pleasure or reference. Uh, additionally, uh, we're going to run through and show a torque speed curve. So this is a torque speed curve at a variety of chosen advance angles. And you see here, because I've got the persist label on, that I can track through as a function of speed and see which advance angles provide me with the highest ability of torque for a given speed. And then uh, we're going to do also an efficiency map test. Here you can see the efficiency map of the solution and represented on, again, a torque speed curve. You can see the various range of values associated with the ability to generate that kind of response. 
It was very, very imperative that you understand uh, the overall losses associated with any sort of design. So we're going to run a motion analysis test here and tabulate uh, the response of the motor at the rated speed and current. So you can see here that for this particular rated current uh, and speed of 4,000 RPM and 80 amps, we have 138 newton meters. You can see that uh, I have added some friction and windage as well as stray losses to help with the energy balance. And you can see the associated losses uh, in the magnets as well as the various pieces of iron and also in the winding itself. And you can see that the efficiency is 96.1%. These are all very handy tests which allow you to scrutinize the design. Sometimes it's uh, very instructive to be able to look at things that we can't actually see. And so this product allows you to go ahead and look at things which are not typically viewed or seen. So we're going to actually look at the flux density in the form of an instantaneous plot. that you can see with my mouse over, I'm able to represent the flux densities at my pointer. And one of the new features that we've added to this part of the interface is that we have a point probe. So you can see here that I've got predefined three points, but with the control key, I can select, and modify, and add additional points within the model to get a feel for the flux density uh, as I'm driving it. And by toggling and looking at the results here, I actually map all of the flux data, flux density data, to a table, which is directly exportable or copy-pasted into uh, another document. Uh, or as you'll see in just a few moments, you can actually add this page to your report and then export it as a PDF. We have a very new, interesting addition to the family of uh, data that we can supply uh, with new technology. Uh, we've been able to add some vector plots. So, first one that we're going to show uh, is surface density. This allows you, uh, when it comes up, to look at and review uh, where, if any place, uh, you have high forces. And so this is something that gives you visual uh, feedback for where you may have places of high force uh, or not, depending on where you're looking. Uh, but this is a new feature that's been added to the software, which gives you greater control to assess the overall design. Well, those are the interface changes. Uh, and as my colleague, um, Chad referenced, uh, we have an additional capability, uh, which is called scripting. And the scripting is from the front of the interface to the back. It allows for any sort of control of the interface parameters that you want. It's ActiveX compatible scripting. And you can do that from Excel. You can do that from MATLAB Simulink. You can do that directly with uh, VB scripting files. All those allow you to control and look at how uh, a particular machine will respond. Uh, you see here on the screen now that I've got an example that's in Excel. And my example varies three parameters, the tooth width, the tip of the tooth, and the slot depth with a min-max and an increment. And with those parameters, I have defined a total of 12 different models that I'm going to scrutinize. And so we're going to look at this uh, macro just briefly. And you can see here that I've read the data from those cells into my script or my macro. I'm going to process those. And then I'm simply going to create copies of the original design in a model. And I'm going to vary those parameters. And due to the ability to uh, concatenate and add to strings. I'm also going to do all of that and name the new design with 
a model reference to the things that I've changed. So I'm going to simply go and run this now. It's going to ask me to locate the model. So I'll do that. Take a brief moment to open up. Apologize for that brief just brief delay, but the model should be coming up shortly. Now if I go ahead and look at the response, you can see here that I've created a total of 12 models on top of the base design. And as I look at them and toggle from one to the other, you can see the various changes in the geometry. And note that this is all within the same model file. And now if I want to, uh, it's always instructive to have a look at one of the tests that we might be interested in. So another part of the interface uh, that you can see here is that you have the ability to select from among these. I lost my little rollover. But here you can see, uh, you know, I've selected all these models. And if I were to so execute all those experiments, it would go ahead and tabulate all that simulation for me and I'll just give you a feel for how it's going to function. You can see in the bottom at all times that uh, gives you an idea of what it's doing and how it's working. And now it's working on the uh, second of those 12 models. If at any time you want to abort, you can simply abort, as I've done there, and go on to another test. So now we're going to look at how to utilize this scripting capability for creating a preset set of experiments that you're going to want to duplicate from one design to the next. And so, uh, as uh, for instance, I'm going to show you that we've written a script which is going to solve for the cogging torque, the back EMF, the torque speed curve, the efficiency map, the motion analysis, several instantaneous field uh, plots, as well as utilizing the field point probes. And we're going to do that again with scripting, and I would like just to briefly look uh, and show you that uh, the scripting is fairly straightforward and simple. And you can see here that I'm going to run four of the um, performance chart tests. And note here that the text in this set of strings in my array is exactly the set of string text that you see in that interface. And so this allows me to fairly quickly utilize and set up and uh, create uh, a set of tests that I want to run. And so once I have my script complete, I simply go to the run script file capability. 
and you locate the script you want to run. And I've created a general purpose script, which the only input parameter it asks for is uh, the advance angle that I want to create, which is the offset angle between the current and the voltage uh, for the design. This is a uh, surface mounted magnet, and so zero for this guy is going to be sufficient. So I'll answer that one question. And then you can see that sequentially, the product goes through and solves for each of these tests that we talked about, tabulates my data, and gives you a reproducible way of scrutinize any design that you have in mind for a particular specification. And I've programmed it to tell me when it was finished, as well as to pop up and say, well, would you like to actually save this data? In this case here, I'm just going to say no. But one of the other parts of that script that I've done is I've actually written all this data from my experiments into our report. And our report is something that I would consider a lab notebook. And you can see here uh, that I've added a timestamp. And I've labeled it as a model reference. As you can see, I've got all of the tests that I ran, including the probes and the probe data in the table. Here I've got a vector plot of the flux. And the final one is the force density. Oops, sorry. Uh, you will note that uh, when you solve a particular test in MotorSolve, that the solution files for that are saved and they're cached so that uh, the tests themselves um, can be um, reassessed or reaccessed at a later date without having to resolve. And in the initial state in which I ran these uh, eight or nine experiments, it took about two and a half minutes for this model, which is simply our default model. Uh, of the interface. I have a couple more of these I'd like to share with you. Uh, this is a bit more complex one. This is a motor I borrowed from uh, activities with uh, the SMMA. And we're going to also run through this one. And note that this one's also surface mounted. Uh, but you can see the status of the solve. On my laptop, this took roughly four minutes. And my last example is going to be the Prius, which actually all of these tests were solved on the Prius in under 10 minutes on my laptop. And the equivalent kind of uh, data accrual would have taken several days or possibly even uh, more than a week um, in the physical lab. So this dramatically changes how uh, we can go ahead and set up and solve and accumulate laboratory data um, with a virtual setup or virtual prototyping uh, using MotorSolve. You can see here, uh, this one's a little bit more uh, interesting than our default machine. Uh, and now without further ado, We'll bring up the Prius, and we'll run these tests for the Prius. Now, the Prius is an IPM machine, and so the optimum uh, advance angle for this machine is 35 degrees, so I think 35 here. As you can see here, it's going to chug through and create my cogging torque, my back EMF, my torque speed. Efficiency map.
Then I'm going to run my motion analysis. Allow me to scrutinize the losses and elimination, and perhaps even the magnets, depending on speed and the number of poles and such that you might have to look at. We're going to accumulate and look at the distribution of fields. Get a feel for whether or not we're actually saturating the pieces of lamination steel. By utilizing the probe data, which I've pre-programmed, I can actually look at the distribution of flux in the teeth as a function of the position and the time. Oops, right here, where I've got three sequential teeth, and you can see, based on the drive and the present flux distributions, uh, that one of them is actually very high, just under two Tesla, which would be 20,000 gauss. Um, the, just two teeth away, it's very low flux at less than half of the Tesla. Well, that gives you a good feel for uh, the new things that are present in the product, the ability that you have to uh, control and utilize uh, the scripting capability. Uh, the Live Docs area of Infoliticus website is going to have a series of uh, these examples and others, which you can leverage uh, to completely customize and control how you would interact with uh, the MotorSolve software. That concludes my demonstration for the webinar. Uh, at this time, uh, we'll entertain questions associated with what uh, we've presented.